at home by yourself or whether you're with your youth groups and um, so we are just going to take a wee moment to run you through what um, is going to happen this week um, and just tell us a little bit about our own situation. It is so great to have you joining with us especially all you who are kind of meeting together as a youth group. Big hello to you. <laughs> um, you might be wondering how we're doing this this week. We as leaders were staying in Port Stewart Baptist. We did some tests a few days ago and we were all clear so um, we're, we're staying together and we're so excited to have this whole week um, recording this stuff for you in the mornings, some talks, a bit of fun in the mornings and then we've got events on uh, every night this week and something even more special on Friday. Um, so tell me, what is happening this week? What's happening? To start tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow? So Monday we have our fun day at the beach. Crack at the beach, is that what it's called? Bounce at the Bounce beach. At the beach. That's yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, that's instead of... That's tonight, and that's instead of Newton Breda. We had to cancel Newton Breda, unfortunately. Sad. Yeah, so. that's a sad time. But tonight at half seven, if you happen to be in the North Coast area, join us at White Rocks at half seven. You don't have to register in advance. You can just turn up, and there'll be a bit of fun and some games um, and, and, and different bits and pieces. So you can turn up and register when you're there. Um, it's a bit of a last minute thing, but it's very exciting. Fancy the beach. What's happening on Tuesday? Tuesday, we're at Not Connie Baptist. Uh, Wednesday, we're at Moira. Thursday, Bethany Baptist. And then Friday, we're up. North Coast and Port Stewart, um, so that's a bit of, of a day of fun. Um, and just if you want to register, you can go to the BY Youth website to register for those. Fantastic. So when we are near you, please do join us. We would love to see you. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I really like all the leaders. But it's n we need, we miss, we, we need we miss more you. crack, you know. We miss you. Yeah. It's so. you. You. Yeah. You might not think I'm talking about you, but <laughs> I do. I am. I miss you. Anyway. Uh, on to what we've got planned for this, the first of yeah. our morning broadcasts. Um, we should have come up with a name for the morning broadcast. But we anyway, should, we can work on that. We can work, we work on that, might have a name tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so uh, what we've got planned first here today is a very, very special feature, which mm -hmm. is going to be running each morning. Um, and it's the Call Pool Karaoke, uh, hosted by the Call Sisters. You really are in for a treat. Um, it's, it's something special. It is special. It is. Feel free to sing along. Yeah. You look right at you, baby. But here's my number. So call me, baby. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. But here's my number. So call me, baby. I'll be like the boys. Try to chase me. But here's my number. Jennifer. Yeah. We've forgotten something. For camp? We've forgotten the speaker for camp. Speaker for camp? Sarah. Where are we going to get at such short notice? Let's go left. We can get one. Let's go left. Let's go left. Oh, right, ready? Right, right, let's have a look. There's bound to be somebody about Port Stewart this week. Who do you think this week? Yeah, let's see. What about, what about that guy over there? He'd be good. Oh, he's far too young. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's older, we've got more mature. Mm -hmm. Far too young. What about, what about him? He'd be perfect. Better, better. We'll put him in the maybe pile. We back up. Let's reserve, reserve. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, who's that? Oh, he looks all right. That looks like a solid option. Here he is. Whoa. Morning. Well, hello. hello. Welcome. Uh, nice to have you with us. Thanks so much for giving me the front 
seat as well. Can't see we drive. Ah, sure, why not? Well, let's go. So, Phil, the Illuminate Roadshow's on this week, and we were wondering maybe you could be our speaker for camp. Yeah, absolutely. Would you be keen? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. But I think we should ask him a few questions mm, first to fair. see if he's the right fit. Fair. It's fair enough. Do you have some there? Well, it just so happens that I packed them in the car should we need them. So. He's been nervous. <laughs> what do you do, Phil? So, I work for Scripps Union in Northern Ireland. And the whole point of SU is to make God's good and known to children, young people and families. And I am the training and resources manager. So but you're the boss? No, I um, I head up a department of two people. I am one of the two people. Still? I, someone's boss? I focus Not on someone. youth and then we have Rachel who focuses on children. But we've also got a schools department and camps and missions department as well. So my next question for you, Phil, is say you're going on a road trip. Okay. What kind of music are you listening to on that road trip? I would say something like this. Inside my bones, it goes electric, baby, when I turn it on. I got that sunshine in my pocket. I got that good soul in my feet. Feel that hot blood in my plastic when it drops. Woo! So I am 36 now. Oh, that's a long time. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I would say um, don't wish to grow up so quick. And to, you know, at that, at that stage you're always asked to, you know, you need to pick subjects and what are you going to do when you grow up and all that sort of stuff. I would just say try and enjoy now. Take opportunities as they come, but don't worry so much about what you're going to do whenever you school and like just enjoy the moment yeah that's sweet words to live by yeah that's good I think, I, I think that's why in one of the, i was a bit of a warrior when i was a teenager so one of the bible passages that really helped me was matthew 6 the whole asp aspect of not worrying mm. um so yeah don't worry enjoy life live now that's good advice that's good Okay, and Phil, if you were to pick a song to soundtrack your perfect Saturday, what would be any in mind that you would pick? So I think it would have to be something high energy, something to get you going, yeah. motivated, yeah. something a bit like this. Take her. 
Chicken noodle. Okay. So you need to take her to camp. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Right, let's sure. go pick her up. Well, there's Hannah. There's, she needs a lift. Go, go, go. Off you go, quick, quick, quick. She needs a lift. She needs a lift to camp. Go get her. You need a there bucket door. Get her there, Jess. Go, quick. Hurry up. You need a lift? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, hop in. Okay. We are impressed. Would you, like some, going? would you like some victory music? Yes, oh, please. What's your victory song? Maybe something by Queen. Oh, I love it. What about, what about this one? I'm gonna have myself a real good time. This is your song, Phil. I feel alive. Take the solo. Our camp speaker, 2020. Stop, stop, stop. Having a good time. Call Phil karaoke, what do you think? Oh, it was fantastic. And I mean, to be honest, I, we knew I wouldn't be here if it wasn't about Phil. I know, I wasn't sure if you were going to make it no, to Bush Street Baptist, yeah. but. We made it. It's uh, fine. Phil is a super fella, yeah. and he's got you here on the trolley, yeah. which is very, very good. And some, some good singing as well. Some fantastic singing. Great songs. I really do hope you were all singing along at home. Yes. Um, Hannah, if yeah. you had to pick a song for Call Phil karaoke, what song would you like there to be? Ooh. I am a fan of, although I know you're sitting in the car, I do love the Cha Cha Slide. You can do, <laughs> really? you can do the actions while sitting in the passenger seat, maybe not if you're driving. Could you do the actions, like move the car, so it's like to the left? Well, like move you the could car do the, the reverse left. one, because, yeah. you know, yeah. Reverse, reverse. Okay. Could be dangerous, yeah. but yeah. Okay, interesting. What about you? What would be your What would I pick? See, it's a difficult question to answer on the spot. You, to be honest, um... I'm just loving Good For You by Olivia. Do you know, I knew, I know yeah. that's, a, that's a really basic answer, yeah. but I, I am loving it at the minute. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going for. <laughs> I'm a 20 year old man and I love uh, a teenager's pop music. Yeah. Okay, on to what we've got next, which is something very, very exciting. There's mm. some strange creatures here in Bush Street Baptist. Have you seen any strange creatures? Well, there's been lots of big moths about. Larger than I would see at home, um, but uh, there's been so a very strange creature that you're about to see right now. Um, that let's welcome the, the bookworm. Book Hello, Caleb the bookworm. Hello. How are you? I am mighty fine today. Brilliant. Okay. And uh, I see you're a very unusual colour for a worm. What do you mean? It's just Red. like a different shade of pink or. Yes, you mean you got sunburned? It was very nice ah, yes, weather so over the weekend. Ginger as well, like. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> sorry, I, forgot, I forgot worms can happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay, you're, you're the bookworm. I am indeed. So does that mean you're into books? Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Mm. And do you eat the books or do you read the books? I read them and then I eat them and just like. It's a part of the circle of life, got the, got the going. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Does it make sense? Well, yeah. he's a bit warm. Yeah, he is a bit warm. That's so, true. Yeah. Um, so, what are you reading in a minute? Oh, I've got a wee task at the moment. Hey. Yeah. Task is ice cream. Okay, yeah, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take a quick one. Take a quick. Okay, so what have we got? So this is a wee classic. It's New Christianity by C.S. Lewis. It is a fantastic mm. read. One that I love. I've read it from cover to cover. And it's insane. Like, he's such a good author. Like, you probably know him as the author of Narnia and books like that. But this one is a real treat. So, mm. so why exactly would you recommend it to our audience? As to why this is a book to read. Well, I'm sure that there are many people out there who have friends who aren't Christians. They are qu- question them. But C.S. Lewis, he is a person who, he was an atheist, but he's very known as a big literature critic. And But he suddenly made this transformation to become a Christian. And in this book, it's a, based on a series of talks that he made on the radio. And it pretty much outlines what transformed his opinion. He starts out by highlighting the uniqueness of Christianity, how it's different to the other world religions and the other views which you probably hear going on around you. And then he goes on to talk about like, the uniqueness of God, describing different characteristics of him. And he also describes like, what the Christian life is going to be like, outlining like, how it could be easy, it could be hard, and like, there is a bit of a cost to it. But it is a really good read, so much good advice and insane quotes. Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, I'm just reading on the back here. It says think, the question on the back. What is the Christian faith? Does Christianity have a common belief? Very, very important question. So, yes. Thank you, Caleb the Bookworm. My pleasure. I, 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 would, would you be back? Who knows? You have to tune in for all the time, Alex. Oh, okay. How thrilling. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to give you your book back. And um, you can finish eating that up. Nom, nom, nom. Goodbye. Bye, Bye. Caleb. Bye. Well, okay. That's kill of God. Um, and interesting ne- creature. <laughs> interesting, yeah, very interesting creature. Uh, and next is a challenge that you can get involved in. Throughout the course of this week, one key and one key only will be hidden at each of our church venues. In each of our morning videos, a clue will be given to help you find the key. Your job when you arrive at the church is to be the first person to find this one key and to return it to me. To the depths in your wet, so you take explosive. So get it out, send your body to flight. Everybody got a target tonight. Everybody come along for the ride. The winner of this challenge will then take part in a lucky dip to win some exciting prizes. So make sure that you tune into the morning videos, listen, out for the clues to be the first one to find the key, return it to me, and win a prize. That was the Illuminate Geocache Challenge. So we're now going to have our first talk of the week uh, brought to us by Henry. And if you want to pause the video here, uh, go off and read John chapter 3 and 4. Maybe grab a notebook and take some notes whilst you're reading through. And then whenever you're ready and you've read the chapters, um, we would love you to press play again and listen to what Henry has to say. Hi guys, let me start off with a couple of questions for you to answer. What will make you happy? The second question is, what will really give you a satisfying life? What will make you happy and what will really give you a satisfying life? Now, as you think about those questions internally or in your groups, you can think about them as well. I wonder what are the things that come to your mind as you think of those questions. I'm sure for, for most of us, if we're being really, really honest once we hear those questions, is that we'll respond with thinking about things like, well, finding the perfect someone or you want to go to uni, you want academic success, maybe stuff like the dream job, maybe there's stuff like possessions, 
material goods, things that, that are outside of yourself that will bring you happiness and that will bring satisfaction into your life. And certainly all those things are good and they're, they're of worth and, and they're valid. But for most of us, we all know as much as those things are good, they're, all, they're ultimately never going to truly satisfy us. Yeah, they might bring a bit of satisfaction, a bit of happiness, but ultimately they're not going to totally satisfy our hearts. No doubt over time, they're going to fail you. You're going to get bored and you'll look for something else. And the real question is on that day, where are we going to turn to? What's the next thing that we'll go and look for happiness and satisfaction in? Maybe as you've experienced life up to this point in your life, you have felt that dissatisfaction so far. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, you felt just happiness run dry. Thankfully, the Bible speaks directly to these questions, directly to this subject that we're thinking about. And when we come to think of, think of God's word in John chapter 4, we read of a famous story where Jesus encounters an incredible person. It's the, the woman at the well. And whenever we come to that story, it's not great to think of it as just one separate story, but we need to think of it as tw a twin story. John, who writes this gospel, he's just finished telling us a story about a man called Nicodemus in chapter 3. Nicodemus, he's, he's a Pharisee, he's a religious teacher, and he has an interest in Jesus. So he meets Jesus at night, and that's quite interesting as well. But he basically comes to the point where he meets Jesus and he really just thinks that Jesus is just a better version of himself. He's just a wiser teacher. And obviously and evidently, he's completely misjudged who Jesus is. And then we come to John chapter 4, the woman at the well. It's the follow-up story, this, this twin encounter from John. And on the surface, it seems to be totally separate stories with, a, with drastically different different characters. Jesus begins traveling and he goes through this region called Samaria and he gets thirsty and naturally goes to a well and he meets this woman and she's, she's a Samaritan. That's important because Samaritans were the enemies of the Jews and also she's a woman and just culturally Jewish men just didn't engage in public conversation with, with women. But the most striking feature that John tells us about this woman is that she has some major moral failings. She's not had one, two, three, or even four husbands. She has had five husband, husbands, and she's actually on a sixth relationship. But nevertheless, she's still quite a religious woman, as we see in the passage. She has some good and solid knowledge of the Jewish faith, and she's probably some sort of, has some sort of allegiance to the Jewish faith. Maybe she believes in God. And what John is doing with these two stories and these two chapters is that it appears that we have two polar opposites. We have in John chapter 3 a well standing Pharisee, and then in John chapter 4 we have a morally lacking Samaritan woman. Yet the point that we're supposed to, and what John's pressing home to us, is that they are actually both the same. They have been searching for this happiness, satisfaction, fulfillment in all the wrong places. Nicodemus in his knowledge and status and the Samaritan woman in her romantic relationships. And the reality is that though on the surface they seem miles apart, spiritually speaking, they are fundamentally the same. They are in desperate need. See, they're sinners and they need a savior, but thus far the saviors they have been trusting have failed them. So Jesus says to Nicodemus that he needs spiritual rebirth, and to the Samaritan woman, he uses the metaphor of water. What he, what he says to her is that she needs not just physical water, but living water. And what is Jesus saying with this incredible metaphor? We'll use the words of Tim Keller, who paraphrases what Jesus is saying here in this encounter with the Samaritan woman. He puts it like this. Jesus says this, I've got something for you that is, base, that is as basic and necessary to you spiritually as water is to you physically. Something without which 
you are absolutely lost. Christ is the water the woman at the well was searching for. But the reality is that Christ is the water that we are all searching for. A new quality of life infused with God's eternal love. A life that can begin right now here on earth, but that will continue long into the future. And this is the good news message that as Christians we believe and that we simply offer out. So how does this affect your life? What is this? How is this relevant to your day-to-day -day living? Let me suggest three things, three simple and brief applications, especially if you're, you're a Christian. Let me say three quick things. The first thing is this. This living water is not confined to one moment of your life. Do not treat the, the well of living water that Jesus has given you, the salvation that you now own, with contempt. We need to come back to it every single day of our lives. It's where we find our source of strength. It's in Jesus, our Savior. You know, the gospel is not restricted to that dare moment of your conversion, as glorious as that is. It's what keeps you going. It's the water we need every single day. That's why Jesus uses this illustration, because we need water every day. Second thing is this. This living water does not cause any of us to boast. It gives us no reason to pat ourselves in the back. We need to remind ourselves, if we follow Jesus and we're his, that the living water that he gives us is offered out of sheer and unrelenting grace. That means we have done nothing to earn it. We haven't deserved this salvation, this living water. So let's not deceive ourselves in thinking or convincing ourselves that somehow we've been great and God has given it to us because of how great we are. That's not the case. And the third thing is this, that we should never ever keep this living water to ourselves. Remember, there's no limit to the living water that Jesus offers. Just like the, the Samaritan woman, whenever she embraced the message of Jesus, she went back and she told the people she knew. This living water is simply too great. It's too sweet. It's too glorious that we would keep it to ourselves. But if you're a non-Christian, if you're not a follower of Jesus and you're listening in to this, I'm sure, no doubt, that you have toiled and harried throughout your life thus far. I'm sure you've been searching for something, a meaning, a purpose, an identity to cling on to. Some solution to the reason of your existence. Why some days just feel, don't feel the same. You feel dissatisfied, maybe a little bit discontent. And you just don't really know why. I love how the American rapper KB frames the gospel story in the context of living waters. And he says it this, and hopefully you'll be able to relate to this. He says, it's the story of hope for people like us who are spiritual deserts. Our souls are dying of thirst and you can't throw money at first. You can't throw food at thirst because you can't drink money and you don't want to simply die with a full stomach. True good news for the thirsty is this, that water has come and you can live. The gospel is water, living water. Here is living water straight from heaven, water that will quench your soul. They'll forgive your sins, make you right before a good and holy God. They'll give you a better framework for living. That's not to say that there won't be any bumps along the road, that everything's going to be plain sailing. But it means that Jesus will come alongside you and he'll give you more grace, more water to keep you going. So come to this well. Drink of this living water in faith that Jesus offers you. Thanks, Henry, and thank you for joining us. Um, wherever you are and whoever you're with, it's been brilliant to have you. Um, don't forget to join us again tomorrow at the same time. Um, and also don't forget about our events this week. Tonight, if you're on the North Coast, uh, half seven at White Rocks, no need to pre-register. You can kind of get signed up whenever you arrive. And the events across the rest of the week, um, not Connie, tomorrow night. Um, Moira on Wednesday night, Bethany Baptist and Banger on Thursday night, and then we've got our day of fun here in Porch Church from 3 o'clock 
Um, all of those you need to go to the Valsu's website and register um, to let us know that you are coming. Um, so yeah, we hope to see you. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Make a big effort to come because the leaders would all love to see you there. Love to see you. Yeah. Love to see you. Anyone, anyone but the leaders. I just want to see all yeah. the people. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> bye.